welcome to book miss day eight i think <laughs> i think it's book miss day eight i hope you guys are enjoying book miss so far i'm having so much fun i am especially excited for today's video i am going to be reacting to one star reviews of my favorite books. My husband Ian did this video. I'll put it right up here and I'll also put the link in the description box. It was so funny and I love seeing his reactions to some of his favorite books. I'm very excited. I'm also a little bit nervous <laughs> because I would die for these books. I just want to say this before we hop into it. I totally understand everyone has their own thoughts feelings, opinions towards the books that they read. It's all subjective. I mean, sometimes I want it to be objective, but it's all subjective. If there's someone in my life who is like, oh, I didn't really like this book that you recommended to me. Usually I'm just like, oh, okay, yeah. Like, I'm so sorry, I wasted your time. But for this, it's just really fun to see what people have to say on the internet. I have Ian behind the camera. Hi. And my dad. <laughs> I thought it'd be so funny if Ian actually read the one star reviews to me. Okay, first off, storied life of AJ Fickery. Okay, found these suckers on Goodreads. Here we go. Poorly written, no plot, stock characters, rife with cliches. You get to the end and ask, so what? <laughs> wow, what a first one to begin with. What do, you, um, what do you have to say about so what? Was it a so what book for you? No. I need to see that again. <laughs> I need to like see it. <laughs> Poorly written, no plot. So I'm speechless. It was not poorly written. It was beautifully written and there was a plot It's a very fast-paced book and there's a lot that happens over years and years. That makes sense I mean, it's like not even 300 pages and it's about AJ Fickery. Yeah. And his story life. Yes. Kind of like Next! <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Still sticking with uh, AJ Fickery. Okay. This was a did not finish. It was a boring story about a boring group of characters. The story felt like an excuse for the author to write about other books. Huh? The is this very bookish? And the relationship between him and Amelia, I think they talk about books. And they mention other books. And so this person seems to be upset that Gabrielle Zevin wrote about other books within her book about books. I mean, the only other book that really sticks out is Edgar Allan Poe poems because they got stolen. Okay, I don't agree with that exactly. I think it's very bookish and I think it's really fun for readers to read. I don't know, you can really relate. It just felt very wholesome. I loved all the bookish things. I'll give you one more. Okay. And then we'll move on. Okay. Last one for AJ Fickery. This book was trying to warm my heart with feelings about books, and I did not like it. In fact, I found it disgustingly schlock. That is, wow, schlocky. Stop trying to warm my heart, jerks. That's like people that are mad because you're too happy. <laughs> like, wait. They're upset because of how heartwarming it was. Yep. Okay, well, if you don't like heartwarming books, don't read it. <laughs> because it's, it is that. And that was its entire purpose. That was. It's gonna make you cry for sure. Next on the list is Finley Donovan. <gasps> and I did it. I, I, I only did it for the first book. Okay, okay, okay. Meh, waiting for a great book. Waiting for a great book? <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't stop rolling my eyes, way too far-fetched, and not funny at all. Okay, I thought it was hilarious, and it was a little far-fetched sometimes. Like, most of the situations she gets in, it would never, ever, ever happen to anyone. But that's just kind of with most fiction. But I feel like with Finley Donovan, it is really far-fetched. It didn't bother me. There's some times where it's like, okay, this is just so too perfect, you know? But it didn't ruin it for me. Like, I feel like that's kind of expected. It was so funny how the author does it. Because you see all the unfortunate things that happen to the main character, you're also rooting for her when she gets those wins. <laughs> so, <clears throat> last one for Finley D. <laughs> Five pages in, and I knew this is not for me. So glad I got it from the library and did not shell out cash. Five pages in? I, she's not even met with the editor yet or a or whatever. Think, I don't even think she's left the house with the kids. <laughs> yeah. Wait, why? The writing's so good. There's some funny moments, especially when she's like, oh. The first line? Oh, and the baby shat himself. Great. Yeah, I'm I knew from the first line. <laughs> That's so sad. I hate that. But at least they didn't waste money. That's true. Yes. That's true. You should have kept writing it though. <laughs> no, just... at least get like five chapters in. Yeah. I'm feeling a little ill. I need some water. 
Okay. Ready to keep going? Yeah. I cannot believe these. <laughs> Six of Crows. <gasps> In a Zenic, the one saving grace of this book. <laughs> Nothing else? What? Nina, I guess, was the favorite part. Okay, I love Nina. She's one of my favorites from the duology. But she's not the only saving grace. And Nej is such a strong female character. I love Nej. And then Kaz is just cool. What? I love Nina. I love her. She might be my favorite character, actually. Sounds like they were over this person, too. Yeah, okay, she was kind of my favorite character. I could see where they would get annoyed with the whole Kaz and Nej relationship thing. Yeah. Because Kaz, he is just like, I mean, he, uh, you have to understand the character before you can really make the judgment. But if, if you just stick with Six of Crows and don't go on a Crooked Kingdom... Yeah. Did you read Crooked Kingdom? Not yet. But I feel like if you were to just end it there, <laughs> Kaz would seem like a total piece, Jerk. piece of crap. Yeah. And then Inez is just like abused. Really made me rethink some things here. Because I kind of agree in a sense. Like, if Nina was not in the stories, I don't think it would have been my fave. Really? I don't think it would have been a favorite for me. Really? Yeah, I love Nina. Yikes, why is this popular? I absolutely do not understand the hype of this book. So disappointing. Disappointing? How it ends though. I just want them to, like, I just want to ask them. With that ending, does it not make you want to hop into the second one? I can understand some people would leave Bardugo. No, I understand that. Like Shadow and Bone, I am surprised I read all three of those books. I... Sorry, Lee. Those were bad. Yeah. Those were bad. I did not like Shadow and Bone. Six of Crows, though I've not finished the duology, it's better writing, better storytelling, because it gets more mature, and we don't have stupid Alina yeah. mucking up everything. Yeah, I wonder why it was disappointing. If it was the plot... Or the writing. Lee Bardugo is not my favorite author, honestly. And I'm pretty surprised that I love Six of Crows as much as I did. Because I did not like Shadow and Bone at all. Like I, You didn't finish Shadow and Bone, right? I didn't finish the last one. It's hard, man. Yeah, I just don't love her writing. Alright, so we're going to move on. Housemaid's Secret. <gasps> oh my gosh. I don't know, I couldn't get into this one like the last. Finished about 50% and it's too similar to the first. Sometimes reading the second book to a series isn't always best and that's okay. <gasps> no, that's the housemate's secret. Okay, I will not take any criticism on that book. <laughs> I love that book. I think it was a five stars for me. If I didn't say it was, it is now. Or is it similar to the first? It, obviously it still follows the main character, Millie. So it's gonna be, you're still gonna have things from the first book follow into the second one a little bit. I was still so shocked and the plot twists were unique to me. I didn't think that she followed the same pattern as she did in the first book. Even like freaking Fadden got me. And she got me in the first and the second, well not the first, but she got me in the second one. And it said that they only made it 50%. <gasps> well so, that's why. Yeah, I don't think they even got to the the first big plot twist, because there were several in that. Yeah. Time. Oh my gosh. Yeah. No wonder. You gotta keep reading. If you're out there, you gotta keep reading it, because trust me, it will blow your mind. Remember how the POVs change? Like 50% through the book. Freedom McFreaking Fadden does that again in the second one. Horrible writing, stupid storyline. I cringed through the whole thing. Should have just let the first book be good. Wow, this was bad felt just a teensy bit personal. Um. <laughs> Hard not to take some of these hits, man. Oh my gosh. Next. Next. <laughs> I like the last page and that's it. <laughs> what? <laughs> the fact that you hate the whole book but you finished it. We don't even, oh no, I was gonna say what's the last page. I know, I was just thinking what the last page is but it's on my Kindle. The last page? And we all know how much she loves this next book. What, what? Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. <gasps> I specifically went for the Order of the Phoenix. Because I love Order of the Phoenix. Because that was like your absolute tip of the top. Which Yes. So I thought let's just zero in and see what people have to say about it. I won't take criticism on this book. Oh, I only have three perfect. I got three good ones then. Okay. 
And we're back to square one. Was it just me, or did this book seem to feel like 10,000 pages instead of 872? I wish it was 10,000 pages, <laughs> because 872 was not enough. It was so good, I needed more. The attempt to reach a more mature audience falls flat in my opinion. Harry Potter is an annoying character here, as is everyone else. That last part was unnecessary. He, he is a frustrating character at this point. All of the other stuff going on makes up for it. And also, and it was on purpose. Like, she was doing that on purpose. Which I know is really frustrating for the reader. And she knows that. But you have to remember, Harry has gone through so much. And I disagree with the last part. Because none of them give up on him. But most but, of us would. Because that attitude, I'd be out of there with that attitude. Oh yeah, same. But, same. No one, I, you have to give it to the whole cast of characters. No one gave up. No one gave up on him and they all understand. And honestly, there are some more, like Harry was frustrating through the Order of the Phoenix. Yeah. But. He was taking everything out on the wrong people. Yeah, he was. You have to give him a break. We do. And Harry gets better. He does. Honestly, I don't really remember his attitude that much. Like there's some times where I'm like, bro, bro, bro. I mean, literally, bro. literally by. Once you get to book six, you're like, whoa, this is like a brand new kid. Yes, exactly. I only got three. I found three solid ones. The rest were kind of like, eh, whatever. Because no one has anything bad to say. Truly, truly. <laughs> Such a long book for events that could have happened in a fourth the amount of pages. It really felt like when someone has a 5,000 word essay to write, but of limited knowledge on the topic, so they just drag it out as much as possible and fill it with crap just to reach the quota. Worst book and the movie isn't much better from this franchise. You just dropped oh, it. that did it. I was happy with how long the book is. Yeah. I'm happy with it. Honestly, I wish all Harry Potter books were that big. Same. I think of where the fluff is, and it's like... But I don't remember. Like, none of it stands out. I know in this book, the, the Christmas vacation is the longest of the series. Oh, I loved that. Which, but I thought that was fantastic. Like, I am one of those readers, I want to get as much as I can with a series that I love. So if you already didn't love Harry Potter going into it, you're not going to like it. Like, you're not going to like that book because you're getting a lot more than the movies are going to give, of course. I ate that up. I ate it up. I loved getting as much details as I could. In Order of the Phoenix, there is a lot going on with the plot, but also you are learning so much. And in this so one, much. this one, she had a lot of... She had the most subplots of any of the other books going yeah. on at once. Because you had they had to deal with Umbridge. Yeah. And Harry had to learn from Snape. Yeah. I love Order of the Phoenix. It's good. I, I, I like the pacing. I yeah. Like, I don't get that beef, but whatever. Yeah. Morningstar by Pierce Ooh. Brown. <laughs> Thanks. I hate this. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's it? <laughs> yeah. There's nothing in that book that was hate worthy at all. I kind of hated Pierce Brown after I read it. <laughs> I was tired of getting taken from everything. I was seriously to the point where I'm like, I'm writing him off as an author. I can't take this anymore. But then I'm like, oh, he's my favorite. <laughs> I'll give you the one golden sun. Here we go. Okay. This book does not deserve to win the 2015 Goodreads Choice Awards, but it might make a nice coaster for my drink. <gasps> they did not. They did. Your drink will be served on a golden platter. <laughs> <laughs> that took me a little bit. That was I good. know, I know. It was so deserving of it. That book was so deserving of the Goodreads Choice Award. Wait, is that what it was? I can't believe it came out in 2015 and I was just getting to it in 2023. I know, same. Golden Sun just stepped it up and I love Morningstar. It did the same for me, so. <laughs> <laughs> so I have two for Red Rising itself, but I'll do them just Okay, one. okay. Unfortunately, this one didn't do it for me. Shallow characters. A dry narrative style without any surprises, and the storyline is predictable. After 18%, I had to give it up. 18%? It seems like everybody can't get past part one. Okay, that kind of breaks my heart. Well, he's still in the mines and all that stuff. Okay, I think a lot of people's hang up with Red Rising is they think that the whole series is in the Institute. Or the DNF it and they think that it's all going to be in the Institute. It's not. You get out of the Institute at the end of book one. So book two and three, like the world is so tiny in that first book compared to the rest of the series. Please continue if you felt bored with the first one. Like I would recommend giving the second one a chance, but 18% in my opinion, which is so funny because I have DNF'd like 
things we never got over. I DNF that book really early on. Probably. I still, I still feel like you got more into it than 80, 18. Like 200, yeah. 200%. I feel like 200 pages in. Yeah, because it was a fat book. Yeah. I think a lot of people's hang up is the words that he invents. Yeah. For his world. And I would recommend reading it on your Kindle. Honestly, if you have a Kindle, I recommend reading it because I think that changed the experience for me because mm -hmm. reading it, I was able to look up words in the dictionary on my Kindle while it was going yeah. because a lot of the words in the terminology that he uses is kind of advanced for me. Advanced um, for all of us. It, it is. It's a little bit hard, but it's sci-fi. And I really wanted to understand what he was saying, what he was talking about to just fully grasp context, that changed it for me. That's why I say that um, the Red Rising Saga takes a while for me to read uh, each book or just any book from him because I take my time. Are you ready? No. Love Hypothesis. <gasps> Miss Allie Hazelwood. I'm blocking everyone who said this was a good book on, t on Book Talk. How could they not like it? I think Book Talk, it, I think book talk introduced me to the Love Hypothesis. But I can't remember. I think so. And I'm eternally grateful. <laughs> I wish that they could just say why they didn't like it. <laughs> it's so cute! Maybe not forever, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Love hypothesis. More like the hate hypothesis. Hate this book with everything I have. Book talk will pay for its crimes against false promotion. <laughs> it's interesting that no one says why. Which I kind of understand. I, I don't either. <laughs> what is there not to like? The hate hypothesis. <laughs> <laughs> Serious. I actually rarely give a romance book five stars. That's like one of the only ones that's a five star for me. That's true. You, you rarely give something like that five yeah. stars. Yeah. I'm just so curious. I want to know why. All right. Seven years slip. Is this? Okay, okay, okay. And then afterwards, we're getting into the Akatar series and then we'll be done. Okay. Got to page 250 and couldn't make myself read this crap anymore. All of the characters pissed me off. Why? What? Wait, why? Okay, I do not understand that. Like, all of the characters are great. I don't see a problem with them at all. They're not complicated. I don't know, I don't agree with that. That's... <laughs> what? All the characters are great. You'll love this one. Nobody, nope, nope. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody, nope, nope. Okay, I kind of like that comment. I don't know, just not a fan of her writing. Characters felt flat to me. Main character Chick was unsubstantial. I'm very surprised this book has such good ratings. Felt like a chore reading it. Wow, wow, okay. So they thought the characters fell flat. And what was the other thing? The main character Chick was unsubstantial. And the one before that? Just not a fan of the writing. Of the writing. Okay, the writing I thought was beautiful. You cried, didn't you, in several places? Um, I think I teared up or I might have cried. I mean, that's a sign of good writing. Yeah, flowery writing really depends on the person. I would say it was in between like Tolkien super flowery and then just not at all. Like it was more on the flowery side than not flowery. She had a beautiful way of turning a phrase and just pairing words together. I honestly feel like she made the words come alive on the page. It's a rare thing. It's that a is a rare talent. thing. But I know that's not for everyone. And it's usually not for me. At first I was like, I don't know about this. This might be a little bit too flowery, but I ended up loving it. I did not think the characters were flat. That one, I have nothing to really, I have no retort. <laughs> yeah, we're just gonna agree to disagree on this one. We have four more reviews. I found one for each of the main books <gasps> in the Akatar series. I left out Frost and Starlight. Because okay. I don't know what anyone could hate about that little little novella. Little cute little winter story. I know, it's so cute. But we're gonna start with Thorns and Roses itself. Okay. I remember hating this book so much and being insulted that it was supposedly a Beauty and the Beast retelling because I love the Disney movie and this piece of horrid writing was nothing like the movie. The good thing is that I forgot most of the story. So I'm all good. This is interesting because I kind of agree a little. I went into it thinking it would be a Beauty and the Beast retelling, but it is so different. There are a little bit of similarities, but it is just different. It's a different story. I could see where the influence would come from, but I would not recommend it to someone and be like, oh, you love Beauty and the Beast, you should read this. That's um, totally fair. Yeah. I agree. I don't think it's Beauty and the Beast retelling. Like, just the beginning. The only trope that's kind of copied is that she gets taken, taken by. And falls in love. Yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm glad you forgot it because 
Maybe it's time to reread? Maybe it's time to reread. <laughs> I can't wait to read the next one because I hate myself and have no self-control. I don't know why that's one star, but I thought that was rather funny. Can you read that again? I can't wait to read the next one because I hate myself and I have no self-control. I don't know why they just didn't put a five star right there. That sounds like a five star review to me, so. Wings in Ruin. <gasps> I love Wings in Ruin so much. Built to make money but hardly worthy of serious examination, SJ Mass's work isn't only critic proof, it resists serious criticism. You might as well analyze a beach ball. This, okay, the Massiverse <laughs> is huge. Like, I haven't even read the rest of her works yet, but everything is so intertwined. Literally the whole chapter, like 54, I think, or 55? No, I think it's 54. In Mist and Fury, there's so many beautiful things revealed. And then there's even more just as the series goes on that you're like, oh, she was weaving that the whole time? Yeah, she was waiting for that story to be made. Last one and then we're done. A Court of Silver Flames. <laughs> No, but someone please tell me what the plot was because even I can't tell you after sitting through and reading this 900 page book. I, I think from that review, they're just not invested in the story. It's mainly about, well, it's about Nesta. Like the other books have been about Feyre. I kind of understand the plot thing a little bit, but there is a plot. And it does tie in with the other books. Yes, I thought 50% of it was like smut, which I hated. Yeah. That like really, ruined it for me. I thought that was overdone, way, way overdone. I don't read it anyway, but that was annoying. Lots of times where I almost DNF'd because I was so annoyed. I was so annoyed with it. So yeah. And that's it. That's all we got. Wow. And if, if some of these reviews seem like, wow, Ian, that wasn't funny or that wasn't like harsh enough, I really... You couldn't find any? Some of these books didn't have really that brutal of reviews. Because <gasps> they're just so good. Honestly. <laughs> Well, that was awesome. Thank you so much. My pleasure. That wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. I thought that the reviews would be so harsh. But I love you guys so much. Please comment down below if any of these books you rated one stars. And please tell me why. I would love to know. I'll see you guys tomorrow. <laughs> Bye, guys.